Hi, I'm Mayor David Narkowitz, and welcome to the Mayor's Report, my monthly program on Northampton Community Television, in which I go out and around the city to try to talk with people about the projects and programs that we're working on on behalf of the residents. Today, we're on the campus of the former Northampton State Hospital, which many of you now know as Village Hill Northampton. Just a quick history, uh, this site was the, the home to the state's, uh, one of the state's several uh, mental institutions. It was called formerly when it closed the Northampton State Hospital. It opened in 1855 and the closure process of this and other state hospitals around the state began in the late 1970s um, and this facility uh, formally closed for the last time in 1993. Uh, that began a process of the state working with uh, city officials and our legislative delegation um, to figure out what, would, what this site would be redeveloped into. And the main campus and all the surrounding lands totaled about 500 acres. Uh, and so in 1994, legislation was passed that essentially uh, decided what, what would happen with those parcels. Many of the parcels were preserved either in agricultural land, uh, recreation land. You may have re uh, read recently about the uh, uh, renamed uh, Ray Ellerbrook Field. That was part of the old state hospital. Some of it went to the Northampton Housing Authority. Uh, but 126 acres of the site, 100 right here, and then 26 acres up the road uh, on Ice Pond Drive, uh, were part of a process to try to develop a mixed-use development, a combination of housing, uh, uh, light industry, commercial, uh, that we now call Village Hill Northampton. And I'm joined today uh, by Beth Murphy. And Beth has been the project manager here for Village Hill Northampton, and she represents Mass Development, which is the state's economic development arm. So Beth, welcome to the Mayor's Report, and Thank thanks you. for being on today. Thanks. Um, so why don't we first start with what is mass development? What, what role does it play in the state? Uh, mass development is a quasi-public agency and it's the state's economic development authority. Uh, so real estate development projects are part of what we do, but we also do business lending, uh, we do community development, and we do industrial bonds. And, uh, and this project, this sort of larger scale project, is, is not uncommon for mass development to be involved in. In fact, I know, I think some of the other state hospital developer, for example, Fort Devens, I believe, mass development uh, has been involved in. Right, and Devens is one of our bigger projects. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a former army base that is being redeveloped into a mixed use development. Um, and actually a town of its own. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we've also been involved, for example, in uh, 100 Cambridge Street in downtown Boston, which is a, formerly a state office building, which Mass Development redeveloped and then leased back a portion of the office building to the state, um, and as well as made condos and other office space. So in terms of what happened here at the former Northampton State Hospital, uh, obviously that legislation was enacted in 1994. Um, there was a uh, citizens advisory committee that was put together here at the local level that consisted of the mayor, the state legislatures, uh, representatives from business and industry, mental health, etc. Um, and they set to work on a request for proposals, um, essentially to try to seek out a developer. Now, even though it's not the city's, was not the city's land, it was state land, under the process that was set up, the, the city had a sort of a controlling role in helping to select who would be the ultimate developer of the process. And initially we chose, the city chose, the community builders, uh, which was a development uh, organization here in the Pioneer Valley. And then as they began, they reached out and mass development became involved. So when was that roughly that mass development became involved in the project? Right, in 1999, the community builders was selected by the city of Northampton and the citizens advisory committee. Um, and we began discussions with them and we actually uh, formed a partnership with them mm -hmm. in which mass development would be the managing partner responsible for all the planning and permitting and uh, road and infrastructure building and the commercial development, 
and the community builders would focus on the affordable housing development, mm -hmm. which is its forte. Um, and so in 2002, that partnership, which was called Hospital Hill Development, uh, in November of 2002, we acquired the 126-acre parcel that was left from the Division of Capital Asset Management, um, and they sold it to us for a, do a dollar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people have often heard me say we overpaid. <laughs> um, but that started the planning process for, for the master plan in consultation with the Citizens Advisory Committee to really set up a framework for a mixed-use, mixed-income development on this site um, that would now includes uh, up to 300,000 square feet of various retail and office space, uh, up to 300 units of residential development and 83 units of assisted living. Exactly, and so um, and so once that process began, it also included a lot of uh, uh, what we call the MEPA process to really talk about what might be the in, the environmental, the traffic, the other kinds of mitigation that would have to go into implementing a project of that scale. Uh, and I know that that was a long community discussion that was supervised by a state agency uh, before you could actually begin the actual real brick and mortar work here. Right. There was a tremendous amount of input from the Citizens Advisory Committee as we started to try and take this very uh, sort of vague idea of a master plan and really start to work through it, work through the actual features of the site, the specimen trees, the topography, um, the wetlands, all of that, and begin to uh, take the vague plan and start to fill in the details. And one of the issues you were confronted with, obviously, is here was a facility that had, uh, you know, centuries plus old buildings, uh, you know, some 40 plus of them. Many of them had not been heated, had fallen into disrepair. Uh, so a big component of it was trying to assess what we what was here, what could be reutilized, and uh, and try to and I know that in and of itself was a process and a project. Right, um, as you mentioned earlier when we were talking, there were 47 buildings here. There was over 800,000 square feet of buildings that were not only dilapidated but really obsolete. That their floor plans were wide hallways and small rooms and really not suitable for reuse. Um, but on the outside, a lot of these buildings had really nice architectural features. And one thing that we spent a lot of time on was what was called Old Main, which was a 500,000 square foot building right in the center of the campus, um, which from the outside, it was kind of an Edwardian looking building. It was brick. It, it really, uh, I think, tugged on everybody's heartstrings who saw it. But there was no economically viable way to redevelop the building. Mm -hmm. But we spent a long time working with the CAC to reach that conclusion. We even had a ballot question here yes. in Northampton, yes. which uh, asked the voters to decide, should, we, should the city spend money to sort of shore up the building in lieu of finding a future developer? And, the, and, and actually, the citizens said no. Yeah. Um, and so then we sort of moved forward with the project as it's proceeded. So um, interestingly, one of the first projects that happened, well, here on the campus at least, uh, was a reuse of some of the buildings, correct? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, over to our right are the former, uh, uh, I think you call them the nurses dormitories? Yes, um, the nurses dormitories and the South Employees Home, two buildings. And they were the first buildings on the North Campus to be redeveloped. The community builders turned them into 33 units of affordable housing. Uh, 26 of them are affordable and the rest are market rate, so mm -hmm. it is mixed income. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they did a tremendous job of taking these existing buildings. They applied for low-income housing tax credits, which were essential to make the project work. Mm -hmm. um, and they redid the buildings. And shortly after they were opened, they were completely occupied. Um, so they st community builders started us off with a tremendous success 
in rehabilitating those buildings. And then the off-site location that I mentioned earlier, Ice Pond Drive, which is just a little bit up the road on Route 66, which was also part of the uh, <coughs> former property. There also was a, a residential neighborhood created on that former state hospital property. Right. That was actually the first residential units that we did. And that was a fairly simple process because it was a, a simply a green field, mm -hmm. a 26 acre green field. Uh, which we sold to the community builders. They built the road, they sold the 26 lots, and they made six of the houses affordable plus two accessory units. Mm -hmm. And it's important to point out too that we sort of, there's sort of like two campuses within the main campus. We're on the north campus. Yes. Um, the, be, below us is the south campus, uh, which encompasses the area from Route 66, uh, Earl Street, uh, Grove Street, uh, Chapel Street, it's sort of all encased within that. Right. And so there were different plans for the different aspects. It might be helpful maybe to just sort of walk us through what were the sort of the next steps that happened because I know there was also a significant amount of obviously money that had to be put into the project for demolition. Uh, yes. for abatement of all the uh, all of the things that uh, you know were part of the building process centuries ago right. lead asbestos etc that had right. to all be abated and then you had to start to think about how do we build the infrastructure to support this sort of planned village concept right so the overall project was 28 million dollars um, and that was financed uh, through a combination of federal and state grants uh, the first grant that we got was called the PWED, uh, Public Works for Economic Development Grant. I don't believe they have them anymore. They've changed the name. Yeah, but, uh, it's, Mass it's Mass Works. Works. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was to do the main road right behind me here, Village Hill Road, um, and that was completed in 2004. Um, then we got a combination of funding, including EDA funding um, and EDI funding to do all the roads around the South Campus. Um, so we rebuilt Laurel Street, Grove Street, Earl Street. Mm -hmm. uh, Mass Highway actually contributed to Earl Street with uh, $1.2 million in uh, federal yes. transportation enhancement and money. straightened that road that used to be two roads that were misaligned and right. created the traffic signal and removed the abutments, uh, people may remember, from the old railroad. Right, and so with all the state and federal funding, you were able to create roads all around the South Campus that were perfect for business development. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I like to say about the South Campus is it, it makes you a little bit humble about uh, your ability to plan and to forecast. Because originally the master plan showed 10 buildings on the South Campus. And the thought was that there would be smaller businesses and office space renting and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> And then, you know, the, we found out that there really wasn't the market for mm -hmm. that much office space. Mm -hmm. It was, it was oversaturating the market, and it really would have uh, been competing against the downtown, which was one thing that the CAC was clear that they did not want us to do. So enter Cole Morgan, mm -hmm. um, and one of the great things about this project has been the city and the citizens' advisory committee ability to re envision what can go on there based on an opportunity like Cole Morgan. Um, and so now today we have Cole Morgan here. They are over 300 jobs. Uh, they're staying in Northampton. All good things that were accomplished. L they're now, they've even changed their name. They're now L3KEO. Right, I'm still. Uh, but yeah, folks may remember the former facility down on King Street that had become outmoded. Right. They were really looking for a new facility. They were looking all up and down the valley. And obviously we wanted to keep them in Northampton. And so when the opportunity came to be able to work with Mass Development to provide a site here, um, it was really a win-win because we were able to keep a major employer, allow them to expand, as well as help create the, one of the big anchor commercial tenants mm -hmm. uh, for this project, uh, which was important. So uh, that happened. Uh, th then um, following Cole Morgan, well, actually, Talk about VCA, because uh, Volts Clark Associates, which is also on the South Campus, is one of the other uh, commercial ventures that uh, is part of this project as well. Yes, our first commercial venture was Volts Clark Associates on the South Campus on the Earl Street. Um, and again, this is how this project has been blessed by local entrepreneurs who have followed the progress of the project and really stayed with it. And they were always interested um, and they 
they stuck with it, they put in an offer, they went through the rather extensive design review process that Mass Development does, um, and now they have a great location down on Earl Street. Yeah, exactly, and, uh, and they are qu quali fine, high quality crafts people of wood, um, and architectural woodworking and those kinds of uh, those kinds of things. Yes. And, and that was an opportunity for them to consolidate mm -hmm. their facility. So, as we talk about these different businesses, I know people often say to me, "Why did the, why did the city, you know, allow this to happen or that to happen?" I think it's important <coughs> to understand that, in, in its essence, that the project is is largely driven by the market, by what the market will allow to happen. We can talk about the things we'd like to happen, right. uh, but then we actually have, you have to go out into the real estate market, work with uh, real estate brokers, uh, work with developers, and try to find out will they invest in the project. Right, and one of the reasons for having a master plan was because this project was too big to do all at once. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we've been able to do is take it a piece at a time, go out to the marketplace, find developers who are interested, uh, and not only interested, but that they have the financial capability to build here, and they have the quality of work that we're looking for, and they also are willing to meet our energy efficiency requirements. And that's important, because that's one of the, I know, uh, one of the things that add to this project are first the design guidelines, which I know mass development worked a long period of time with the planning board uh, to set up design guidelines for what the structures would look like, how they would lay on the land to kind of make sure we were really capturing that village uh, environment that we wanted, the mixed village, but also the commitment to energy efficiency, which mass development had. It really dovetails with the city's commitment to that. And that's a great segue to some of the residential, other residential that's occurred here where that's really been put into motion. So talk about some of the next phases, uh, the Jonathan Wright project, for example, or the other, uh, the other project, uh, the townhouse projects. Okay, so the North Campus is primarily residential. Uh, Wright Builders was our first residential builder on site, and he built Morningside and Eastview. Morningside was 11 single-family homes. Eastview uh, is 11 townhomes, and they are LEED-certified developments. Our next residential developer in was uh, Pequoy, and he has built, uh, is permitted to build 24 small-lot single-family houses, again, with a high energy efficiency, usually a HERS rating, uh, which is a different standard, a uh, HERS rating under 50. Um, and that development started a little over a year ago, and already they are halfway through. Mm -hmm. They have 13 lots that we have sold to them out of 24. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a great, it's built up a great neighborhood over there yeah. um, based on the template that was on the master plan. Across the street in, on the south campus on Laurel Street, we have four single-family lots, and we've recently brought Transformation, Inc. Uh, on board to do those four single-families, and he specializes in zero net energy houses. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, you know, quality building, but with a high energy efficiency component. So we're up to three residential developers. Uh, Wright is going into his next phase of residential development, which is going to be called Upper Ridge, mm -hmm. um, and that's 28 units. Mm -hmm. uh, 16 of those are townhouses, and then 12 are a new kind of residential unit called a flat. So in two buildings, there'll be six flats each, two flats to a floor. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a new product in this uh, market, and we're very excited about it. What all these different residential projects have in common is that they fit into the kind of new urbanist design that we're uh, trying to promote. We want a walkable community. We want a community that takes advantage of existing site features like the parks and the specimen trees. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what all these builders have done. And, and I should say that uh, among the amenities, there's a lovely trail, bike and walking trail that rings the entire campus. There's a lot of uh, crosswalks, narrow streets, lots of sidewalks, connections to the city bike trail, right. um, all this agricultural land that's preserved, that's available to people. Uh, and so that's really made it an attractive place uh, for people who want to live close to town, 
maybe you only want to have one car, maybe no cars. Right. Uh, the bus goes right by here. So it really fits in with what the city wanted to do was try to encourage uh, denser development closer to our downtown core so we wouldn't have to recreate all these services and all these utilities and have people making these long car trips out in the far western edge of our city. Right, it's, it's about three quarters of a mile walk into the downtown from here, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, one of the things that people say, oh, you know, this isn't exactly new urbanist. And I always say, no, it's not because it's a redevelopment. Exactly. We, we're trying to incorporate the existing features from the hospital that we want to save, um, as well as the principles of new urbanism. So we're not purists, but we want to make it work as a, a single inviting community. And I think we've been successful in that. And, and one, of the, one of the first commercial uh, developments on this northern part of the campus is actually right our, over our shoulder, the gatehouse building. Yes. Literally, uh, the, the major tenant just moved in this week. The parking lot's full. Right. Uh, talk to us about the gatehouse project. Uh, well, again, this was initiated by Wright Builders, and uh, I have to give them a lot of credit for being the first one in both on the residential side and the commercial side. Mm -hmm. But this is a 16,000 square foot building. 12,000 square feet is Fozzie and Associates, which is a software firm. And then there are two retail spaces available for lease and one restaurant space. And Fozzie, like Cole Morgan, is another example of a growing company, a company that had outgrown its space. They were looking all around the valley for a new space and working with uh, the development team and with Mass Development has been able to expand their business in Northampton, which is a great win for, for the city. Yes, I, I mean, I, we benefit from the fact that there's a lot of entrepreneurs already in Northampton who are ready to expand, and, and this is an attractive site to them. One of the pieces that I often hear about when they, when people who may not have been following the process for the entire time, and then they start to see some of the home sales that are happening up here, and the affordability issue comes up. The master plan required that we maintain a, a pretty high percentage of affordable units. How are we doing in terms of meeting the goals that were set? Well, we're doing quite well, and, and I think what happened there is that the community builders were at the forefront of all of this. Yes. So the affordable, affordable units were kind of the first units to be in here. Uh, 2006 is when Hilltop came online, and uh, that's 33 apartments, 26 of which are affordable. 2008, uh, Hillside, which is there, six other apartment buildings, 40 units, that came online, 32 of those are affordable. Okay. So there's a, a high level of affordability front-loaded into exactly. the project. Yeah. Um, and so, um, and we will continue to have more affordable units coming. Uh, most interestingly is Christopher Heights. It's 83-unit yes. assisted living. 50% of those units are going to be affordable. Exactly. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, I really like that because it's like you could, you could stay at Village Hill your whole life and always have an affordable yeah. unit. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and also it really is a mix of neighborhoods that are affordable apartments, that are affordable condos, market rate condos, all beautifully designed. Yes. You can't tell the difference, uh, and that's the same concept with the assisted living project as well. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point because they're quality affordable. They're affordable, and you'll have low heating bills, and you'll have low electric bills because mm -hmm. they were built right, and the units will last. Exactly, yeah. And to our left is actually one of the, one of the other remaining original buildings uh, from the state hospital, the male attendance building, which right. people may recognize when they pull into Village Hill. Um, it's the building with the uh, portico, with the, 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 what do you call those, the columns yes. uh, the, on the porch end of the building. That's one that we've been trying to attract a developer to. Uh, we've had some interest, a hotel developer, uh, other folks have looked at it. That's one of the next uh, things we also have to work on here. Yeah, uh, the male attendants and the coach house are the two remaining existing buildings that we were searching for a developer for. Um, when we had the hotel developers, we were very excited because the hotel use could make use of the existing uh, footprint interior. The small rooms in the corridors actually fit quite well with the hotel use. Mm -hmm. um, so we're still 
looking around, trying to see what other funding might be available to make a project like that go forward in the mill attendance. Yeah, and I want to say, I, I want to thank, thank you because uh, the CAC process obviously happened, the RFP process, the selection process, um, but your, your team works very closely with the city. I know with Mayor Higgins before me, uh, we have regular uh, standing monthly meetings to talk about issues on the project, to talk about ideas for trying to attract people to the project. You've also set up a website uh, for the project, which has some great information, videos, uh, testimonials from people who live here. Right. What's the, give us the address for that. Villagehillnorthhampton.com. Dot com. Yes. Great. Yes. Um, again, I, I, for folks who haven't been up here lately, um, I really encourage you to come up here. It's a, it's, many of the streets are now city streets. And uh, take a walk up here and just see the amazing transformation that has occurred. And so I want to thank you for uh, being on the show today. This Village Hill, uh, the redevelopment of the Northampton State Hospital, is probably the largest, most ambitious economic development project in the city uh, that's now been going on for you know, 30 years now. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it's been great to sort of see the different phases happen. There's still more to go, uh, but it's been a pleasure to work with you, and I really appreciate you taking time uh, to be on the show today. I am happy to do it. Okay. Well, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of The Mayor's Report. As always, if you have any questions or comments about the show, please feel free to email me at mayor at northamptonma.gov or call my office at 587-1249. I really appreciate you tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you at the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.